and popular holistic health expert based in Chicago. For the past 45 years, Karen has been committed to taking care of her body and helping others do the same. In addition to a raw diet, she believes in regular detoxification and how the development program that she teaches to hundreds of people each year. She is the embodiment of her teaching as an ageless and elegantly energetic 71 year old. No, 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 72. Oh. <laughs> That's just how it was on it. <laughs> the Karen's brand includes an intimate yet sweeping day spa, Karen's inner beauty center, and an extensive learning center. Headlined by a 28 day and a 10 day cleanse program, a cookbook and an uncookbook, and an all natural retail lines, spanning wellness supplements and cosmetics and raw cuisine. So, before I hand over the mic to her, I'd also like to invite everybody. I'd also like to invite everybody to tomorrow's talk, August 11th, by our keynote speaker. Sam Rajinder Singhji Maharaj, who will be speaking in the main tent at 2.30 p.m. Um, the topic is inner peace through meditation. We are very, very excited to have Sam Rajinder Singhji here. He travels the world teaching meditation for spiritual transformation. There's going to be a huge crowd, so please come early, grab a seat, and join us for that wonderful event. Without further ado, Karen Kellys. Everybody. This is so exciting for me yeah. to see how this whole vegan vegetarian world has erupted. Yeah. You know, when I started 50 years ago, nobody had even heard of what I was doing. I was just a crazy lady in Chicago, not eating animals. And the whole movement has exploded, and there's so many young warriors out there carrying the mantle along. It's very exciting for me in this day and age. And I have one of my little young warriors right here. This is Charlie, who's going to be assisting me today. Charlie is quite a cook. I guess you can call her more of a chef than I am. I don't call myself a chef. They gave me this cool little chef jacket, but I'm really not a chef. I just know how to make food. And I want you all to understand and feel that way. There's no big secrets to making vegan or vegetarian food. All you're doing is leaving the animal off the plate, basically, and making sure that you have lots of flavor and taste. Because I know so many people, the minute you bring up vegan or vegetarian, it's like, ah, you know, no taste, no flavor. And that does work for some people too, but I am very passionate about food. And I love taste and I love flavor. And I always tell people there's no way I could have remained a vegan for 50 years eating steamed rice and boiled vegetables. It just wouldn't happen. So I've done a couple of uh, pretty simple recipes here today because what I want to show you is the way that this can evolve into so many other things. And Nancy, uh, I don't see my bowls and other stuff that I brought, the wooden bowl and yeah, because I'm going to use it. And where's the other thing with the food in it with the zipper on top because I'm going to make the bowl with the cauliflower? I have another basket with a zipper thing. Yeah, pull that one out. Um, because you can just take something very simple and prepare your food. I think it's real important, especially even if you're not eating vegan or vegetarian, to take the time to prepare your food on the weekends. This is what I do. I chop, I cut, I marinate, and I get everything ready on the weekends. And when I have small children at home, we would go to the farmer's market on Saturday, and Sunday would be our food. And the thing of it is, I could take the same combination of food and make about 10 or 15 different things with it. So we're going to make something very simple today. What are we making today? <laughs> uh, we're going to, and all of these recipes are available in my book. Um, Soak your nuts, the cookbook. And the beauty of the cookbook is one side is cooked recipes. Somebody got that, right? One side. I guess they all used to soak in their nuts here, so it wasn't a big deal. Um, but um, this side of the book is cooked vegan recipes. No, this side is raw vegan recipes. I got the green ring. And this side is cooked. So you get literally two books in one, two recipes. Your mom has the book, of course she has the book. Your mom has the vegetables too. So the beauty of this too is um, I feel it's a bridge. Of course I think raw food is the way we all need to eat. This is the way God intended every animal on the planet to eat is raw. Humans are the only animals that voluntarily cook their food. No other animal on the planet cooks their food except human beings. Uh, except our pets that we feed like us, 
and they need vets also. Animals in the wild don't get cancer, diabetes, um, obesity. It's only the animals that we feed like us. And they get, they're like the canary in the, in the um, mind showing us what's going to happen. The death of an early age and old age. So raw is the way we were intended to eat. But we don't necessarily get there overnight. So finding a lot of cooked vegan recipes, getting rid of the dairy first, finding bridges to take yourself to your next step. And I promise you, you will look and feel better than you ever dreamed you could. Because I always say, look at what you accomplished working against yourself. Can you imagine what you do if you were in harmony? Amazing, right? So uh, we're going to make a couple of very simple recipes. I'm going to talk and let them do it. Let's put this back up. Oh, and we're doing a raffle today, too. What are we raffling off? Oh, we're raffling off this cute little tote bag. Great for going to the farmer's market or grocery shopping. So we're going to raffle off a couple of these today. And so if you filled out, but you only get to win if we can read your uh, writing. Huh? OK. All right, so let's get started. What will we make first, Nancy? The banana pudding? Huh? Uh, you know what, I got banana pudding up there, and the only reason I'm going to start with that because here's another new concept. You know that you should actually eat dessert before your regular meal because yes. of the way... <laughs> All it takes up, you're actually supposed to, because of the way your body breaks down the sugars, you kind of rot the food uh, your second, so you get bloated and distended and uncomfortable. So if there are any kids out there, tell your parents you need dessert first. And here's the deal, if it's a raw dessert, it doesn't matter. If it's raw, then your body can use everything. I always tell my clients, give your kids my raw ice cream instead of cereal and milk in the morning. Seriously, it's going to be that much better for them. My kids went all through grammar school without ever getting sick a day. I used to give them a week off from school every year because they stayed healthy. And they stayed healthy because they didn't eat sugar and dairy and wheat and all the other things that the kids can eat. Okay, so I've got my helper here today. I'm going to make her do all the work since she's a regular kitchen person. So um, we want to prefer nice, ripe bananas. So a lot of times you can go to your um, fruit stand and ask for all the old ones, and they'll give them to you for 10 cents a pound or something, get them real cheap, and take them home and freeze them. And uh, you've got bananas for your banana pudding. So are you going to feel this for me? Or, uh, oh, okay. I'm not supposed to do that yet. <laughs> okay. So uh, we're going to make a cashew first, right? So what I did was, these were soaked overnight. And the reason we soak our nuts, the reason for my book, the reason we soak our nuts before we use them is because you break down the enzyme inhibitors and the fats in them so that it really takes less to fill you up and your body can digest them easier. You know, so many people have nut allergies now. When I was growing up and going to school, you could take peanut butter to school. You can't do it anymore now. And all uh, allergies are based in digestion. So if your digestion is off, then you're gonna have problems digesting nuts or foods of uh, wheat and things like this. We actually sell a digestive enzyme that can help you get over these disorders at some point, but right now we soak all of our nuts. And, oh, let me give you another little tip too. If you had like a bag of walnuts or pecans, and you soak them, where normally you eat the whole bag, a few of them will kill you up because you're getting a whole lot of food for living cells internally. So we're going to start with our soaked nuts. And you guys have the recipe. Can you pass out the recipe for all of Let me have the recipe in front of you. Yes, it's in my book also. So if you don't have the book, and I have a YouTube channel with everything up on there for free too. So it's in the book, it's on the YouTube channel. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our, um, one and a quarter cups of cashews. We do know that when you soak them, they will swell and expand. And our Vitamix. If you don't own a Vitamix, I really recommend getting one. My Vitamix I've had for over 40 years and it's still working. You just have to change the little thing every so often. Here's all of your regular blenders just basically go loud, loud, and louder. But with a Vitamix, you can really break things down. Okay, so we have our cashews. And we're going to add three quarters of a cup of water. We want to keep them going. We're going to put in three quarters of a cup of water. Now, I'm calling for honey in this recipe, which uh, vegan people don't consider vegan. Uh, the only reason we used honey for years was because once the bees are gone, there's no life on the planet. 
uh, I didn't use the agri farm and bee farms, and we used the local father and son, and the bees didn't have to die, so I was okay with it. But now in the restaurant, we use cocoa sh coconut sugar, which is much lower on the glycemic index. I wouldn't necessarily use agave, that's kind of like syrup, uh, but you could use coconut sugar, and uh, you could use honey too. All right, so we're going to add our sweetener, so you can use the sweetener of your choice. And then we're going to add vanilla extract. And I use flaxseed oil in just about all of my dessert recipes because it gives it a buttery flavor. And flaxseeds are good for your arteries and all too. But it gives it a nice buttery flavor. This is so simple. And by the way, what we're making here, you can flavor it any way you want it. You can make it strawberry, you can make it caramel, you can make it blueberry. That's the beauty of these foods. And you don't even have to clean out the blender in between. <laughs> Everything just kind of goes together. All right, so um, is it, we're ready to blend it. Oh, we're just going to put our flax oil in. And we have, okay. Oops, turn this flax oil. All right, let's go. Any questions on anything going on so far? I'm really hot in this jacket. Thank you. I'm not a real chef anyway. Here's the other deal, too. I'll give you guys another little piece of information. I broke both of my shoulders. Can you see this? I broke my one shoulder in 17 places. I split my kneecap. I fell. And I've been falling since I'm nine years old. It has nothing to do with my age. Uh, and uh, 72, I'm doing everything again. And it shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't be that way. Everything heals in half the time. But I also have a hyperbaric chamber. We do a lot of oxygen therapies in my spot. That's mm -hmm. I'm in church now. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here is our banana. Now, the thing of it is, it's so simple. You wonder, it's this simple. How good can it be, right? Did you see? I just took some cashews, some water, some vanilla, and a sweetener, and I'm done. I'm done. We could also do this and make it savory and make it like a cheese or a, a savory sauce to it. We could add uh, basil, we could add Italian, we could add curry, we could have, we could add all kinds of things. I want you to get the idea that it isn't a recipe, it's a guide. Take it as a guide and you can do so many different things. You could even do this with, I just thought of this, and add some chopped spinach to it and make like those spinach dips that they make. The people, I mean, there's no end to what you could do with it. Where did you get this? Other people have it too. Oh, she's got one too. Oh. Oh, okay, your friends. I was wondering, is there a conspiracy in the audience? Everybody got this band? Oh. You see how we vegans roll? <laughs> We find each other wherever. <laughs> okay, so what she's doing now is we're just sprinkling some flax seed in here because the thing of it is why not just take it up a notch and make it healthier? So you could use some chopped nuts if you wanted, or you could use flax seed. Um, you could use just about any kind. If you have a little maca powder, if you have some kind of supplement that you want to take and make it taste better, you could use it in this also. So we added some flax, and now we're going to layer some bananas in. Then we slice bananas. Where's our cashew cream? Oh. And we're just going to layer. I bet we didn't bring a fresh piece of fruit to put on top of something like this. Oh, okay. So we did flax, banana, but you could just layer this. You could use flax, banana, nuts, flax, banana, nuts. And are we serving this to them now? Oh, oh, can you guys get to eat some right away? Yeah, I made that decision. <laughs> Do you have any questions? If that's, yes, you could actually you could add blueberries and make it like a purple cream. You could add strawberries. Yeah, you could put I every. Mean, that's the thing. This is just. I wanted to do very basic recipes so that you could build on them at home. And you know what I would love if all of you went home and made this and sent me a picture of it? Because I know what you do. You go to cooking demos, you eat the food, and then you're done with it, right? You go home and make it? Prove it. Send me pictures. 
<laughs> Prove it. Because I know what you do. Okay. And it was, you know what would really be pretty on this is if we had something red to add to it too, or some color. So you're right. Some color would be very pretty. I'm just going to put a pepper. We're not going to really eat it, but just so we can see how pretty. See how pretty that would look? Huh? Well, pepper is a fruit, by the way. Technically, a pepper is a fruit, so you could do it on there. Or a tomato. And there we have it. So now you get to taste it. You had a question, yes. Yeah, I've heard that there's a lot of cholesterol in cashews, and you put an awful lot of uh, cashews in there. Well, I did raw cashews. You know, the foods that you're talking about that they've done most of the studies are foods that have been processed in some kind of way. When you eat them naturally the way God said, I guarantee you, you could eat pounds of nuts and you wouldn't even put weight on it if you weren't eating all the other stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it, it depends on the whole collective diet is what I would think. And we tend to single one thing out. So I say single out something in the other world and not in this world. Okay? <laughs> yes, sir. Could you make a batch of that and how, how long would it stay? So if I made a batch of this, yeah. What, now here's a little trick. Because we're going to make uh, rejuvelac, that's one of the things we're going to make. If I were making it for the restaurant or to keep it home, you could freeze it, by the way. It would lose some energy, but you could freeze it, the sauce. But we make things with a rejuvelac base instead of the water. And rejuvelac is a preservative. So you could actually get um, three or four weeks out of it if you made it with rejuvelac instead of water. And we are going to learn to make rejuvelac today. Okay. But everybody, and we sell Rejuvelac made, but it's also in my book, and the Rejuvelac is not my recipe, it's Dr. Ann Weemore. Do all of you know who Dr. Ann Weemore is? No? She started the whole raw movement. This is the reason we have raw food, but most people don't even know who she is anymore. She also discovered wheatgrass for us, and the sprouts, uh, Victoria uh, discovered sunflower sprouts for us, so uh, that's kind of the backbone of this whole thing. Any more questions? Yes. Stevia? Yes, yeah, stevia is probably the best alternative sugar that there is out there. I just don't care for the taste of it. It leaves an after uh, taste in your mouth, but I think it's the best thing that you can use. I just don't like it. And you don't have to like everything in the healthy world, right? <laughs> the spoons that we're passing out, hang on to them, okay? Because they're plastic, too. Use them for the whole event. Wherever you go and eat, use this little plastic spoon. Okay. Yes. Uh, you could, it would thicken it up even more. The oil just gives it a nice buttery taste. That's why I do it. It's part of this good flavor profile that I do. But yes, you could use it like this. Yes, ma'am. Pardon me? When you measure the nuts, you like hot bug nuts. Are they the soaked nuts or are they the dry nuts? Uh, they're the, I, dry, I soak them, they're the soaked ones. Yes. Yeah. But I put a cup and a half in to soak. So I cup and a quarter in to soak and then it comes out to be more. Yes. Yeah, but the thing of it is, this recipe is so loose, it doesn't matter if you use more or less. The more you use, the creamier it's going to taste. It's not going to ruin. I always say there are no mistakes in a raw kitchen. There really aren't. You, cannot, you can always do something with everything. There are no mistakes. And which is why I'm not a baker, because you can make a lot of mistakes with baking. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I can't hear her question. Just some oh, wait, I got this lady first. Uh, yes. What? What about monk fruit? Yes, that's a wonderful sweetener. Also, I said use the sweetener of your choice. Absolutely. And you just adjust it because really all food prep is about the taste. You've got to taste it to go along anyway. I can give you the most exact measurements, but it's all according to your taste how it's going to be. Right? Any other questions? Yes, before we use... Huh? Well, I don't use agave because it has a reaction like syrup. Uh, like, uh, what's that fructose syrup that people use? It kind of has that same reaction on the body. It sends up the sugar index in the body. You could use maple syrup. That would be a better than agave. But here's what I'm saying. If you're going to make this for yourself and you're not in this world, use what feels comfortable. I don't want people to feel that they have to be so perfect and so this is the only way. You know, allow yourself to expand and make it work for you. I always say you got to keep it practical to keep it in practice. And if you, this is what you have in your house for a sweetener, then use it. 
Yes, ma'am. My ratio is 99.9%, but that's because I was a vegan for many years before I came to raw. I say any any equation that you can put in there other than what most people do, most people do 10% raw and 90% cooked, you know, maybe orange juice in the morning, maybe a salad at night. I would try and at least get it to 50-50, if not more. I started to explain, you need enzymes for every metabolic purpose in your body. When the enzymes are gone, that's when you die, literally. Every time you eat cooked food, your body has to use its store of enzymes to break that food down, which is why people are getting old and tired. Because you're literally using up your life force at the table as opposed to adding to it. You guys can bring my enzymes or anything to sell so I can show them. I just can't see them, right? Would you pick up the bottle of enzymes? So one of the things that I recommend people do, we didn't bring in. Oh, I brought chlorella and enzymes. But if you do some kind of chlor chlorophyll or greens with your cooked food too, you're going to help with the metabolism of it and adding some oxygen to your body. So I do, uh, my diet is primarily greens, mostly green stuff. Yes, ma'am. I did add honey to this, but I was recommending you could use any sweetener of your choice. The peas, are there peas? Oh, beans. Oh, I said, did I put peas in there? <laughs> The bees, yes. Um, for me, I think the bee farmers need to be supported. Not the big average of bee places where they're doing it on a uh, commercial scale, but local bee farmers, I do believe, need to be supported. Because without bees, the planet is no longer in existence. And you don't have to kill the bees, in my opinion. I only use coconut sugar personally, but I used honey for many years before I got to the coconut sugar. I think what I try to get across is there is a perfection you can live in, but I think when you're perfect is when you die. So I want people to be comfortable with their bridges along the way to keep it going, whether then I'm not perfect, I've got to have it this way or only way, and then you kind of stop. So I've allowed myself bridges all along the way, and this is why I feel I'm as successful as I am. Plus, I cleanse and detox my body a minimum of five times a year. Minimum. Yes, ma'am. You just collect it. They don't have to kill the bees to get the honey. It's in their cones. As far as I know, I'm not a bee keeper. This is how we're going to make another dish. We're going to make a cow dish next. We're going to do that one too. Yes? I'm sorry. Uh, I use my brand of flaxseed, which is already milled. So I use this flaxseed, so I just use the plain flaxseed because this has been milled in a specific way, you don't have to break it down. You wouldn't have to, unless it's hard to, to, to break down. I would just use it. You could break it up, but I think you could just use it also, either or, in a blender. Yeah, we need to. Huh? Sure. Yes. And I have one more question. Oh, how was the how was the food? Nobody said anything. You have to encourage me to keep me going, huh? I don't think you like it. I'll leave, huh? Are, are the recipes are where? The recipes are on my website. If you go to KarenRaw.com, K-A-R-Y-N Raw.com. The recipes and classes, everything is available there. So this is the flash idea. Okay, all right, so we're going to move on to the next recipe. Which one is this? Oh, I got half out of that one. Oh, I <laughs> Okay, so everybody got food. Everybody signed up for the raffle. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna get back to that. Absolutely. Okay, so what are we gonna make now? The cauliflower or the rhubarb? Okay. Oh, I forgot. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna make is our curry cauliflower. 
So once again, I'm going to start like I did with the other one. You can make this an Italian cauliflower. You can use cumin and make it a Latin type of cauliflower. It could take on any flavor profile that you're feeling like tonight. So I, you know, you can get all your cauliflower ready, get it cut up, and you could uh, put a little olive oil and salt on it. That's how we cook things in the raw world. Olive oil and salt. You want to do that now? You want to here? I'll let you do it. You want to just here and then mix it up for us, okay? So this is basically how we cook all of our vegetables. So you can marinate everything ahead of time. You could do mushrooms. Uh, you could do zucchini. And then you could add any flavor profile that you wanted to it. By the way, we are going to have a children's cooking class coming up. So if you're interested, DM me and let me know because I know school's going to be starting soon. And uh, we want to get in. Charlie wants to do a couple of kids cooking classes with us too. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Do we have a minimum age for the cooking class? Uh, probably four. Three or four. Because we're going to be milking the cow and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we can do a little more. So let us know. And we only use Himalayan pink salt, which is like taking a mineral. Okay? Am I losing your attention here? <laughs> kind of loud. Okay, so we, we're, we're going to let the cauliflower sit over here and do our form of cooking of it. We're going to let it sit there and marinate after she massages it. Now we're going to make the sauce, and once again, we're using cashews. Remember I said you could change this to any flavor profile you wanted, so now we're going to make it savory. Before we made it sweet, now we're going to do the same thing savory. And she's going to add a quarter cup of water to it again. So this is basically the same sauce. I'm just adding curry powder. You can even add chili powder to it if you want. I mean, there's no end to what you can do in a raw kitchen. And then if everybody's using turmeric for their inflammation, you can add a little of that to here. And you give it a pretty color for the, for the cauliflower. You know, add your supplements to your food when you can. We're going to have some extra banana stuff too when we're done, so. Any questions while we're waiting for yes? Yeah, they're cheaper in pieces. <laughs> this is always the bottom of the bag, so they sell the pieces. Very cost effective. So the restaurant, I always buy pieces. Uh, she said she, uh, she noticed we're using pieces, but she always soaks them whole. And I said, because I buy them in pieces because it's cheaper. <laughs> Yeah. We're cost effective. Sure. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, let's see. Well, she's asking me if this is too thick. And once again, let's see. No, I think that's kind of perfect because I want it to stick to it. It needs salt. Definitely needs salt. And you can add a little water because it's a little, a little, can we add olive oil to that? Yeah, it needs olive oil and a little bit of water. Yes, ma'am? How long do you soak the cashews for? How long do I, well, I soak everything overnight. There are time frames for soaking different things. The only thing that I think you have to be very specific about soaking is if you're making wheatgrass, and the, the wheat berries that you soak have to be just 10 hours. But everything else, I just kind of throw in a jar and soak it overnight. Mm -hmm. There are timetables to follow, but I don't follow them. Yes. Yes. How long did I marinate? Well, to be honest with you, the longer it marinates, the better the sauce that it's going to get. So this will be kind of hard. So you could also marinate it overnight, too. Uh, so the, long, the salt breaks it down and pulls the water out, and it kind of cooks it. So, yes. Yes, we don't refrigerate the nuts when you soak them. 
That's done outside of the street. It won't, nothing terrible will happen, you know? It's, I mean, people have all these weird reactions to food because you're used to cooking cows and pigs and dairy and stuff. And you got to be real worried about in the refrigerator, out of the refrigerator, how long. This is fruits and vegetables that's been sitting in a garden outside, you know? So I wouldn't worry about it in the next two. <laughs> right. Okay, so, um, we'll let you look at this a little. Oh, okay. So we're just going to add, I'm just going to, up it a little bit and add some color. So I'm just adding three different types of pepper. I'm going to add some red onions to it. Add my curry sauce. And really, I spend more time talking than I do making food. It literally takes seconds. That's what I want you to get out of this demonstration more than anything is how quick and easy. And all my recipes in my book, they're all like 10, 15 minutes. I, I can make fancy food, but you know what? That's not what I'm going to do on a consistent basis. If I'm going to have a party, I may, you know, pull everything out. And I can even make this fancier for a party. I can stuff some celery and tomatoes and things like that. But the stuff that I make for regular, uh, make for myself at home, 15 minutes. 15 minutes for my makeup, 15 minutes to do the food, 15 minutes. I don't spend more than 15 minutes. Charles is doing a good job of getting our red onions in there. And then we're just going to add the curry sauce to that. But I'm going to show you something else that you could do with that that would be interesting. You could take that same cauliflower that we had here. This is some, something that I had at home in my refrigerator. I always keep shredded cauliflower in the refrigerator. You see, this doesn't look like rice. And that's what I use it for. I use it for rice. So, you know, throw some cauliflower and you have a meal for a month. Easily. So, I'm going to do a bowl with this. Why don't you use two? Did I bring another one to Oh, here. No, it's not going to work. Oh, yeah, I'm going to turn the answer on. I'm going to work on it. I feel that food. I can't wait for you to taste this. I hope she has it. We should use it here, too. And I might add just a tiny bit of salt because it brings the flavors out a little bit more. And I wouldn't worry about using the Himalayan pink salt. I know so many people are off salt. But here's the deal. The Himalayan pink salt is like taking a, a mineral pill. Remember in the olden days on farms, they used to have salt licks for the animals because it was healthy. It's just what they've done to the food. They've taken all the minerals. So you use Himalayan pink salt. I actually use Himalayan pink salt with baking soda to brush my teeth too because it actually remineralizes re the bones in your teeth. Our food is supposed to be healing. It's not supposed to be for social. It's supposed to heal us. Okay, Karen. Are we going to use it? Oh, we're going to. somebody's house, this is the best way to introduce them to your vegan lifestyle. Take them food. Right? And it literally, I mean, I was talking about it, it literally takes minutes to do this, folks. It literally takes minutes. Not pretty? I'll taste it for you. 
There's not enough you can do with them. You can take it and make them. Um, you know how everybody's doing those bowls? It's like a bowl with it too. How is it? Does it need a little more salt? Uh, they're going to be on the website, I understand. And they're in my book also. Um, does it say the page on here? I'll find it for you on the page. But look, I just want to show you. Look how cute, you know how everybody's doing these bowls? You could do a bowl, you can have some mushrooms on here also. I mean, this is one recipe, and I can just go up. I can make a barbecue cauliflower. You know, you could just take this one vegetable, and you could make a meal for a month with it, literally. Oh, it's on veggie So now we just made a bowl with it, too. How are we doing? Simple. But it's a complicated tasting food, isn't it? You see how easy it was? Have you tasted it, Charlie? You tell me what you think of it. You taste it. You can't make food and not taste it. Does anyone miss it? Okay. The little one said it was good. That means it must be good. All right, so, last, any, any on the cauliflower, that was that simple enough? And I encourage you, go home and make it tonight, make it yours, and send me a picture. I would love to uh, post it on my uh, Instagram page or my Facebook page. So if you go to Karen Calabrese for Instagram, <coughs> now we're going to give you one. Okay. Yes, if you send it to me in my direct, if you send it to me like a story, then I'll post it there. Oh yeah, I don't, I am 72 in some arenas. I don't quite know how to do that. Let's ask her. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I know if you send it to me, I can post it. If you send it to me, if you direct message me on Instagram with a picture of it, then I will post it. That I know how to do. So. All right, so last but not least, we're going to make a drink called Rejuvelac, but I kind of fancied it up. And this is a drink that I learned to make from Dr. Ann Wigmore, who started the whole raw movement for us in our time. And it is a fermented wheat berry drink. Now, I know so many people have wheat allergies now, and they're afraid of it, but once again, raw living wheat does not have the same effect as the cooked processed wheat on the body. I've had many people with celiac disease and all kinds of allergies due to rejuvenate. As a matter of fact, Dr. Rigmore taught that we can actually get over our allergies because the wheat is a profound seed. They actually found seeds, uh, wheat berry seeds in Sheeton Commons pyramid and they still sprout it. So it's like a perfect food forever for you. But you have to get your system. So this is a drink we make. It's fermented. So it's some good bacteria for your body. It's enzymes, so it's going to help you digest the food that you just ate. It's a living B vitamin, so it goes directly to your central nervous system. And it kind of just calms you down. It doesn't make you laid back. It just kind of takes that edge because it's putting the yeast in balance in your body also. So it's a wonderful drink. And Dr. Wimmer would have us all drink at least two glasses of it a day. But as you heard me say earlier, you can use it as a preservative. So we make our energy soups. A lot of the things that we make, we mix with Rejuvelac because it is a preservative. If you buy it and in this glass bottle, it would last in your refrigerator for six months. 
So you can make it at home. It's very cost effective to make and very easy to make also. But what I've done with the Rejuval Act is I've kind of added mint and a sweetener to it and we call it a mint julep. But this is going to help you digest the food that you just eat and we're going to give you. Some of these look darker green than the others. You could do the same drink with turmeric. You could do the same drink with maca. Or you can just drink it plain. So, um, and the, the, um, we do like recipe is not only in my book, it's in all of Dr. Andrew Moore's books, and we actually sell it. Uh, you can use it for your smoothie base. If you're making smoothies for yourself at home, it's a great base. Uh, it's a great way to add your chlorophyll to. I think I mentioned earlier, but the most important part of my food consumption diet is taking in the greens, the chlorophyll. Because wheatgrass, corella, the different greens have the same molecular structure as your blood. There's just a magnesium iron difference. So you're literally cleaning up your blood. And I feel it's necessary because even though I'm eating organic, even though I'm eating vegan, even though I'm eating raw, I'm still living in this very toxic world. So I'm taking in all kinds of chemicals. And I like to remind people the um, vegan uh, farms right next to the cook, the regular farm, the pretend farm. So the wind isn't stopping here. So we're taking in chemicals on a consistent basis no matter what. So I do all of these preventative things. So I'm very big on all the grains. I do spirulina. I do Did you guys get the drink? living fiber. I do corella and I do enzymes. Then and I do go about five or six other grains. But you can go to the so next we section. are doing a sale today of some kind, some higher grains. They've been well versed in this stuff today. Oh here, yeah, this is what we're doing today. <laughs> we're doing a sale. Sales Do I have any more questions? How's the reduce of life, folks? It's kind of like a fine wine. Don't you ferment the grapes for wine? We're just fermenting wheat berries. It's so simple to make. So what we did was we took sprouted wheat berries. We're not going to make it. Sprouted wheat berries, we put it in a blend in the blender to buy the mix. You let it sit for 48 hours. You strain it and you make the new one. You can make it with rye berries, you can make it with quinoa, uh, we make it with wheat berries. Yes. No. No, we're not taking the stuff. You're adding to the stuff. We had a question over here, I'm sorry. Wheat berries out. It's wheat berries, it's what they grow wheatgrass with, it's what they grow wheat with. You can buy wheat berries at Whole Foods or just about any of your um, markets. We order it online. Uh, we, it's a berry. And it's what you use as a base to make bread. But this is the seed we use to make this. It would eventually be pastry flour if we were to grind it up. It would be like pastry flour. Any more questions? Does anybody have any questions of Charlie? <laughs> My helper here. Want to ask her what it's like to work with me? <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> I don't know why Charlie's acting shy today. She's normally never shy, huh? How did you get shy Charlie today? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Wine, uh, I personally don't drink wine, but I think that, and there, you have to see, if, if you're vegan, you want vegan wine, because most wines they process through fish gills and things. But uh, I personally don't drink, but that's because I don't do anything to age myself. Uh, alcohol converts to sugar in the system, so I think I'd rather have a sweet dessert, raw dessert, than a glass of wine if I'm going to take it in. But I really avoid anything that's going to convert to sugar in my system, because it ages you, because I can see it's actually aging you. But not because I'm a good tissue. It's because I'm vain. Yes, ma'am. She's asking about digestive enzymes. Yes, uh, our enzymes are plant-based, and they have a probiotic in them. And actually, for ladies or gentlemen, if you were looking to lose weight, if you started doing our enzymes with your meal consumption, you automatically start to lose weight. I had to stop taking as many as I was because I was losing more weight than I wanted to. Oh, you can order them online. We just didn't bring them here today. But you can order my enzymes if you go to KarenRaw.com 
Or you can go to my new space at 1717 North Ashland in Bucktown. Yay! I'm starting all over again at 72 folks. Starting all over. Oh, I didn't bring them today. I'm sorry. I didn't bring these on today. Oh, uh, right now, just my wellness center. And my, we used to be in other health food stores. We will be again. But right now, just my wellness center are online. You can get them. 17, 17, or that one. Can I get a big glass of your people like you? Can I get a glass of your people Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's the only time you marinated. So if I had let it sit longer, it would have been softer. Yeah, it doesn't take any time. And you can leave it in the refrigerator. No, I got some refuel for you. Thank you. Oh, can I have this full of refuel Thank you. Any more questions? I got classes coming up. And we have food prep classes at my wellness center on a regular basis. We have a food prep class coming up. Uh, and we do cook vegan and raw vegan classes, cooking classes. I have detox classes coming up. I have speakers coming in. Oh, and I'm doing a retreat in Costa Rica again in November. So I just did a retreat. Uh, one is coming up November 6th with Victoria Spobenskis. We started the whole raw movement with Dr. Wigmore and with Johnny Juicer. Any of you follow Johnny Juicer on um, Instagram? Johnny will be doing our, um, we'll be doing a retreat together. So come join us November 6th. It's going to be all raw. We're going to yoga. We're going to go hiking. We're on the beach. There are waterfalls. So I encourage you to come join us in Costa Rica. It's limited space. Here's to all of you. Thank you. Right. God, that's so good. And I'd like to remind you, are there any other questions? Oh, yes. Oh, this is made with um, wheat sprouted blueberries and jubilee, mint, and coconut sugar. That's it. It's so simple. And I put it in a wine glass at home and I thought I'm drinking fancy. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I have a little one over there. Can somebody give her the microphone over here? I have a small person. He's over there. Absolutely. If uh, you can come, tell your parents you want to come to the retreat in Costa Rica. <laughs> Absolutely. Say it's a must. My birthday present. The Charlie will be there. And we actually have some babysitters lined up there too if the parents want to go out and do other things. And we'll have babysitters for kids also. Yes, ma'am. What do I recommend for menopause? That's a great one. You guys want to know? Are you ready for a drink? <laughs> um, yeah, well, first of all, we get the symptoms because our bodies are out of balance. And it's way too, it's more of the sugar imbalance in our bodies that's creating the hot flashes and things. Because I actually went through menopause with no symptoms whatsoever. It's actually one of our stronger periods of our life. But because our bodies are broken down, this is why they start to break down even further. But I guarantee you, uh, like in my detox class, we use fenugreek seed capsules to help balance blood sugar levels. We use a systemic enzyme, with MSM in it, to balance blood sugar levels. You can literally start to get over your hot flash, those symptoms, if you just start to limit and put your blood sugar levels in balance. The rest of it comes with detoxing and cleansing. You can ask it's kind of a funny story, but it's 50. I sent my husband out for a pregnancy test. I had no idea that I was uh, going to menopause. I had no symptoms whatsoever. So I'm saying if you cleanse, you detox your body, um, minimize your sugar levels, you shouldn't have problems. If you're going through it right now, I would start taking some finger seed capsules. And maca powder. Maca powder for hormones. Yes. Are we done? Yes, ma'am. Osteoporosis, yeah. So much of that is, is the leaching from the bones from the foods that we're eating. 
Uh, I do not have osteoporosis. I was checked for it, even though I've gone through all the broken bones. Like I said, I've been breaking my bones since I was very little. Uh, I would do Irish moss. One on more. It helps with your bone structure. Irish moss, yeah, it's a form of seaweed. I take it every day. Uh, we sell it also, and I eat Irish moss. That really helps with your bone strength. And I would stop the caffeine, because the acid is leaching out of your bone structure. But Irish moss, I would definitely start to Anybody else? Well, thank you all for coming today. It means so much to me. We're going to do the raffle, and I would like for everybody to remember that if you don't take care of your body, the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given, where are you going to live? Thank you. Bye.